Our creative imaginations are always gearing towards an alternate reality of our current lifestyle. What if people had superpowers? What if dinosaurs still existed? What if we could travel through time? What are the repercussions to all of those scenarios and how would it change life as we know it? Let's explore the realm of possibilities in an MMA aspect. This is What If TJ Dillashaw Pulled Out of UFC 280? The biggest card of the year, UFC 280, just happened and we saw the co-main event of the evening end in an unfortunate way. TJ Dillashaw's left shoulder popped out from a takedown courtesy of Bantamweight champ Aljamain Sterling. TJ's face showed it all. Agonized in pain, he looked at referee Mark Goddard and let him know he's fine. He was able to hold on until the end of the round and TJ's coach immediately massaged his shoulder back into place. Second round starts and it pops out again two and a half minutes in, this time from a submission attempt by Sterling. Aljamain was able to take him down and before we knew it, he got the TKO stoppage and held on to his belt. Dillashaw in his Octagon interview revealed that his shoulder has been dislocating all throughout camp for this fight and came into this fight injured, going to the extent of warning the referee Mark Goddard backstage before the fight that it will happen and to not stop the fight. He never mentioned the injury to Dana White in fear of the fight being called off. But what if TJ did disclose the injury? What if the fight had to be cancelled and who would be called to step up to the plate to challenge the Bantamweight King on short notice? Four weeks before UFC 280, TJ Dillashaw calls Dana White and reveals that he has to withdraw from the title fight due to a shoulder injury. It is now Dana's job to find a contender for the Bantamweight King. He talks to matchmakers Sean Shelby and Mick Maynard in the infamous war room for what seemed like a night-long process. Let's look at the Bantamweight Top 15. Although Peter Yan is the number one ranked contender, he's coming off two straight losses from Sterling. Dana also expressed little interest in having them fight again. Sean O'Malley was of course the next thought. But with not having a championship level 5 round fight in his resume, the doubts came in. And since O'Malley and Jan was already booked for UFC 280, it was an obvious setup for the next Bantamweight title fight. Next up was The Machine, Murad Valishvili. A fantastic wrestler coming off the best fight of his career getting the win over former featherweight champion Jose Aldo. If Dana made that matchup, it would be a grappling fan's dream. They are both fantastic wrestlers with the same nitty gritty style of smothering their opponents. Now the problem with that fight is that not only are Marab and Sterling teammates, they are also very close friends having cornered each other in both of their fights. There was even a statement from then UFC welterweight champ, now head coach, Matt Serra. That's something that I don't think the UFC is going to be thrilled about. This is not Rashad Evans and John Jones. Rob is a different breed of guy in the sense where life changing money, this and that, some guys are happy the way they are. The money is an extra but you're not going to throw something at this guy that's going to change his mind. Oh, okay now I'll take Aljo's head off. It's not going to happen. Corey Sanhagen fresh off his fight against number 10 ranked Song Dung was a heavy consideration but because he already fell to Sterling back in 2020, the matchmakers were afraid that it wouldn't sell as much. They wanted someone new to fight for the belt, and there was one contender left. He fought multiple five-rounders. He had just KO'd a former Bantamweight champion in impressive fashion. This man has gone on a tear of his own, fighting out of Irvine, California, the pride of Ecuador. Marlon Chito Vera was always prepared and fight ready. He was more than happy to come in to save the co-main event. Aljamain Sterling and Chito Vera signed the contract and the Bantamweight title fight was secured. Chito Vera's best work came in the form of his high IQ striking thanks to head coach Jason Perillo. He's able to quickly analyze his opponent's habits and capitalize on them on moments notice. His patience in the octagon mixed with unmatched power behind the strikes is a key to his victory. However, Aljamain Sterling is a champion for a reason. His greatest strength comes in the form of being able to outgrind his opponents. He can take a hold of your back, sink in a body triangle, and not let you breathe for five rounds if he wanted to. This man does not let off the gas pedal. Through using a fight simulator through MMAOracle.com with a huge 67% chance of winning, Aljamain Sterling wins via decision victory. 
a sort of obvious answer, the Funk Masters Wrestling is top tier and we all expect him to use his best form of skill in the Octagon. And that's what would happen if TJ Dillashaw pulled out of UFC 280. Let me know if you guys like this type of stuff. Um, this is brand new to me. I really enjoyed making this content. It's fun exploring a different realm of possibilities, especially in MMA where anything can happen last minute. Thank you guys for supporting. If you like it, comment. Let me know what was your favorite part. Let me know what I should change. And that's it. Thank you.